Good day students and welcome to another presentation dealing with exam technique. Today we are going to look specifically at test of controls. So to refresh your memory on a few concepts, let's firstly discuss how to approach a test of control question. Firstly, we will provide you with a scenario. And the question will typically require you to describe test of controls. Remember that you can only test the internal controls that are in the scenario. So the first step will be identify all the internal controls in the scenario. Then the second, second step will be to describe the test of controls to test these internal controls that you have identified. When you describe these tests of controls, you need to include the how, the what, and the why. So remember, you don't have to write there the how, the what, and the why. This is just to organize your thinking process. Make sure when you describe your test of control that the how includes how you're going to do it. For test of controls, it should be by inspection, observation, reperformance, or inquiry. Of those, the most important are inspect and reperform. If you cannot inspect something or reperform the action, you will typically observe or inquire. The what of a test of control is typically the source document or the action. And then lastly, the why is the reason why you are doing the test of control. You're just explaining to me what you are trying to do. So let's look at a few practical examples. If we look at a manual internal control, the following internal control was identified from the scenario. The store manager signs a manual purchase requisition form as proof that he approved the stock to be ordered. Okay, so the test of control, what will be the how? It will be inspect because we have a document, so we inspect a document. We don't re-perform a document, we don't observe a document, and we don't inquire a document. Inspect the purchase requisitions for the signature, so the what, so tell me what are you inspecting, and specifically on that document, what the signature, and why are you doing this, is to confirm that it has been authorized. Okay, so let's look at another example, this time relating to automated internal controls. So if the internal control uh, was identified where Mr. O'Hara approves all purchase orders electronically by entering a unique username and password, the test of control can be described the how is attempt to. So remember, this is a re-performance. And when we, when we describe test of test data, we typically use attempt to. What? Approve a purchase order by entering a fictitious username and password. And why? Confirm that it is rejected. Okay, so let's get down to business and look at a practical example. Once again, we are going to refer to the scenario of App Connect. Okay, so if we firstly refer to the required section, it says, with reference to the payroll and personnel cycle of AppConnect. So you will refer to the section dealing with payroll and personnel cycle in the scenario. Okay, so it says, formulate test of controls that you would perform to test the manual and automated, important, make a note here, internal controls in AppConnect, payroll and personnel cycle. If you make use of audit procedures using test data to test the automated controls, limit your answer to invalid test data. Also important. Okay, so just let's just break this up. Okay, first of all, we need to work out the time that we should spend on this question. So the question counts 22 marks and you have 1.8 minutes per mark. So that's roughly about 40 minutes that you have to answer this question. Okay, so the question deals with test of controls and it specifically says that you should include manual and automated test of controls. It also says that if you use test data that you should limit your answer to invalid test data. This means 
that you only describe test data that would give you an error message. Okay then, and a tip. How are we going to approach this? So firstly, work through it line by line. Identify the internal controls and then you will test those controls by formulating audit procedures describing the how, the what and the why. Okay, so let's go back to the scenario and let's start reading through and see what internal controls we can highlight. Okay, so first of all, it says the following is an extract of the system description of the payroll preparation and payment of salaries at AppConnect. AppConnect's workforce consists of a total of 60 fixed term employees. All employees receive a fixed monthly salary according to their pay grade and some employees also qualified to earn performance-based bonuses on top of their fixed salary. So in this, this paragraph, there's a little bit of background given. None of this relates to any internal controls. Um, it just gives us a basic description. So we cannot identify any internal controls in this section. Okay, if we refer to the next paragraph, AppConnect uses the base system software to keep record of all the personnel and salary information, as well as leave records of each employee. No internal control identified there. Let's continue. The human resource manager is required to capture all of the employees' information on the system. Okay. All of the fields that are entered are controlled using automated edit checks to make sure that information is accurate and complete. So this is important. When the human resource manager enters information into the system, there are automated edit checks checking that all the fields are entered correctly. So this is definitely internal control and we should highlight this one. Okay, if we continue to the next sentence, an example of one of those fields is an employee's identification number, where the edit check confirms that the identification number entered consists of certain characters. So this is typically just an example. It relates to these automated edit checks. And this is where if he enters, for example, only 11 digits, then the system will uh, show an error message and say that the identification number is not captured correctly. And we need to test it. Okay, so then the pay system software checks that all the required fields have been captured and comply with the automated pre-existing error checks. So this is an important one. So the system automatically checks that all the required fields are captured. Okay, so once again, if not all required fields are captured, then it will show an error message. So this is definitely an internal control that should be tested. Okay, so if we continue to the last sentence of that paragraph, the accurate and complete input of information is very important, as the pay system software uses the entered information to calculate each employee's net salary automatically. Okay, so first of all, you should ask yourself, if the system is, is calculating the salary, salary automatically is it done correctly okay and how will we know only by testing it so once again this is an internal control that should be tested and you can highlight that one okay next paragraph okay so if we continue to the next paragraph only selected employees have access to the pay system software and these employees do not necessarily have access to all of the functions on the system Access, access to the functions that employees should have is linked to the employee's username profile and the username that they use to enter the pay system software. Okay, so this is important and we can highlight this as an internal control. As it stipulates that not all employees should have access to the pay system software. So typically someone working in the store should not have access to the payroll and also to certain functions. So a clerk should not have access to the approval of the payroll function and therefore um, 
Yeah, therefore, this is an important control to test to make sure that only certain employees has certain access. So you can highlight that. If we continue, the information technology department is responsible to link employees' user profiles to the usernames, which is required to obtain access to the pay system software. The human resource manager provides the IT manager with an authorized signed employee user profile form. This is important. This form should be signed as proof that it has been authorized. And as soon as the signature comes into play as proof of authorization, you need to test it. So you can highlight this as an internal control. If we continue to the next paragraph, to obtain access to the pay system software, employees have to enter their unique username and password. This is important. It's not any password. It's a unique password. So we need to test that that's in fact the case. So you can highlight it as an internal control. Automated access controls that have been put in place by the IT department include requiring that password must be changed on a monthly basis. This is a control to make sure that all passwords are changed, so we should test it. Then, and then the system must log off after three unsuccessful access attempts. Once again, an internal control put in place to make sure that the fraudulent person do not have access to the system. Okay, so we can definitely also test this one. Activity report of access gained, unchanged passwords and unsuccessful access attempts are generated on a daily basis and followed up by the IT manager. Once again, this is important. What does it help if we have these internal controls, but no one is following up on it? So we must make sure that that is indeed the case. So we will perform a test of control on this action. Okay, and then the last paragraph. Another report that is produced on a weekly basis is the Employee Information Amendment Reports. This report indicates all the changes made to the employee information. The report is usually printed out on a weekly basis and authorized by the Human Resource Manager who signs and files the report in the Human Resource Department. I just want to break up this sentence. The report is printed out. So in this case, it doesn't stipulate that it's only printed out to a certain printer or it doesn't give any information on internal controls regarding the printout of this report. There's, therefore, there's nothing for us to test here. Okay, if we move on, it's authorized by the human resource manager who signs it. This is definitely an internal control that should be tested. He's authorizing it, the form by signing it, and we need to test it. And then he signs it and he files the report in the human resource um, department. So by filing something, something is not necessarily an internal control. It would have been a control if we files the report in sequence, then we might have tested the sequence. But there's no information given in this scenario about that, so we therefore did not in, uh, identify in any internal controls relating to that. Okay, so let's move to the last part of the question, uh, payment of salaries. Payment of salaries takes place by way of electronic electronic fund transfer EFTs on the last business day of each month with no exceptions. So this is a control that should be tested. It's indicating to us that it can only happen on a specific day. Therefore, if there's a payment made on the middle of the month, it should not be valid. So this we should test and you can highlight it as an internal control. The EFT facility that AppConnect uses forms part of the pay software package. With the pay software, the payroll list, which includes the employee's name, banking details and net salary to be paid can be up uploaded directly to the EFT facility. The sentences, we didn't in, uh, identify in, any internal controls, it's just describing the process and how it works. If we continue to the next paragraph, the financial manager uploads the payroll list to the EFT facility and flags it as ready for payment. 
As a first level of approval, she will compare a sample of employees' detail on the payroll list to the ready for payment list to make sure that the list correspond, correspond with one another. Okay, so this is important. She's firstly performing a check to make sure that these lists agree with each other and we should definitely test it, the, this control. Okay, if we just finish that sentence, before approving the payroll payment by entering her unique username and password. Okay, so the payroll can only be approved by entering a unique username and password and therefore we should be we should test this. This is very important. Otherwise, the payroll can be approved by any anyone. So we need to make sure that it's in fact the case. Okay, an automatic email is sent to the CFO to indicate that the payment run is ready for its second level of approval. The CFO should click on the link provided in the email, which, take, which takes him directly to the ready for payment list on the EFT facility. He then performs certain validation checks on the ready for payment list. Okay, so again, he's also performing validation checks. We don't necessarily know which ones because the scenario is not explaining to us, but we need to make sure that this is the case. And we will typically, in this case, inquire or maybe observe that he does this um, to make sure that it's taking place. Okay, and then he will approve the payment run by entering a unique one-time password. So he needs to enter a one-time password. And again, this is a control that we should test and you can highlight that one. This will give the bank an instruction to pay the salaries to the beneficiaries. The pay software system and accounting system are integrated and therefore, once again, once a transaction is entered into the system or payments are executed, all affected records are automatically updated in AppConnect accounting records. This is important. Okay, is it correct? The system is doing this automatically. Okay, but is it correct? We need to test it and we can test it both ways. We can test it in terms of completeness and occurrence. You can refer to the memo in, in the solution. We will look at this um, and specifically just see which one is for completeness and which one is for occurrence. Okay, so if we look at the solution, you now identified all the internal controls. So you need to make sure that for each one that you identified that you now describe a test of control. Okay, so if we just look at a few of them, I don't think I won't be going into too much detail on each test of control. Uh, but let's look at the first one just to, to see how we describe it. The first one says inspect that edit checks are implemented on the pay software by attempting to enter data into the pay software system that do not meet the specified criteria. And then I also included the example relating to the identity number. Okay, so remember we identified the system is doing certain, um, has certain edit checks uh, to make sure all the information is correct and we need, therefore need to test it. Okay, so the one referring to the identity uh, number is an example. There were also, there might be other examples, so you can give me an example, but um, the marks are only limited to one example in this case. Okay, the next one that we identified is that the system only, uh, or the system requires you to, uh, to complete all the required fields. You should therefore uh, test it. You can say, attempt to capture employee information, but leave out one of the required fields. Okay, then the system was also calculating some of the salaries. So you had to re-perform that calculation to make sure that it is correct. And then remember, we said that um, certain employees have access to certain functions, and that is very important. In this scenario, we can inquire. There's no document that we can inspect, um, although you can maybe refer to the user profile forms where you can just confer, uh, confirm that the employee is only uh, allowed to have access to certain functions. 
Okay, in this case, there is two, um, two ways that you can test it, you can inquire it, or you can attempt to gain access to all the functions for an employee who only have restricted access. Okay, so there's two ways. Sometimes there, there are two ways to test the control. Um, if you are uncertain, just list both. Um, it, there's no harm in listing both. Okay, and then inspect a sample of employee user profile forms for the signature of the human resource manager to confirm that it has been authorized. I want to draw your attention to the fact that if you just say to me that you inspect, inspect the signature, you won't get the full marks. You need to tell me, inspect the signature to confirm that it's been authorized. In, remember to include that why there, otherwise you won't get full marks for this. Okay, and then you can continue. You can have a look at um, a test of control six and seven and eight um, and nine. All of those are really straightforward. You've identified those internal controls, and then you have to um, uh, describe the test of control. So make sure when you work through these examples that you are able to see the how, the what, and the why. Okay, and similarly on this page, you also can work through it and see um, that you describe your test of controls um, comp in the correct manner. And um, lastly, I just want to draw your attention. You would see in this um, answer that I provided you with the assertions. Um, it wasn't necessary for you to give us the assertions, but it's there for additional information and then just to see um, you know how it affects your surgeons. What we can maybe in this example look at uh, number 16 and 17. Remember where we said that the system is automatically updating the, the general ledger and so on. And then I said that you can test it by way to make sure that it's complete and occurrence. So when you make sure that something is complete, you will test it from the general ledger and then compare it to the records on the Pi system software to make sure that it's complete. And then with occurrence, it's the other way around. Okay, so remember that. If you're not sure about this, refer back to your assertions, the description, and how you test occurrence and, and completeness. Okay, from my side, that's it for today. All of the best with your revision, and remember that we are available for any questions um, you can just send us an email to the module mailbox. Thank you.